A few years ago, I was in a Sunday school class, and the teacher said something that really stuck with me. He pointed out that God loves to teach us through stories. Stories have characters, characters make choices, and choices have consequences. So we can learn a lot from stories, and I found this is especially true with the Old Testament, with its lesser-known stories. Today, let's explore the story of Hagar and one of the lessons she teaches us. Hagar had a difficult life. She was Sarah's servant, and then when Sarah and Abraham couldn't have children together, Sarah wanted Abraham to take Hagar as his wife so that Hagar could have a child on Sarah's behalf. We read that after Abraham and Hagar were married, Hagar became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarah, with contempt. By the way, you might have noticed that I'm quoting from a different version of the Bible than we normally do in church. The church handbook states, When possible, members should use a church-preferred or church-published edition of the Bible in church classes and meetings. This helps maintain clarity in the discussion and consistent understanding of doctrine. Other editions of the Bible may be useful for personal or academic study. I want to highlight that last phrase, other editions of the Bible may be useful for personal or academic study. Sometimes I like to read versions of the Bible that use really plain language so that the text is easier to understand. Okay, back to Hagar. So Sarah was angry because she felt Hagar was looking down on her, and Abraham essentially said, she's your servant, you can do whatever you want to her. Sarah started to treat Hagar so harshly that Hagar ran away. Think about how difficult Hagar's life was. She was a servant, forced into a marriage, and then driven out of her home while she's pregnant. It's hard to imagine a more challenging situation. As Hagar was in the wilderness, she paused by a spring of water. An angel appeared to her and promised her that she would have numberless descendants. He said, You are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears, for the Lord has heard your cry of distress. Pause to think about this. Hagar, who felt completely forsaken, was not forgotten by the Lord. We read, Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, You are the God who sees me. One lesson we can learn from Hagar is that no matter how bad things get, God will hear our cries of distress. He is the God who sees us. Hagar returned to live with Sarah and Abraham and gave birth to her son Ishmael. Several years passed, and miraculously, Sarah became pregnant and had a son named Isaac. When Isaac was a toddler, Ishmael, then a teenager, was making fun of his little brother. This infuriated Sarah. We read, Sarah turned to Abraham and demanded, Get rid of that slave woman and her son. He is not going to share the inheritance with my son Isaac. I won't have it. This upset Abraham very much because Ishmael was his son. But God told Abraham, Do not be upset over the boy and your servant. Do whatever Sarah tells you, for Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. But I will also make a nation of the descendants of Hagar's son, because he is your son too. So Abraham gave Hagar some food and water and sent her and Ishmael out on their own into the wilderness. Again, Hagar faced a brutal situation. She was homeless, jobless, a single mother with a son, and they were both going to die in the barren desert. We read, When the water was gone, she put the boy in the shade of a bush. Then she went and sat down by herself about a hundred yards away. I don't want to watch the boy die, she said as she burst into tears. But God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven. Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Go to him and comfort him, for I will make a great nation from his descendants. Then God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her water container and gave the boy a drink. Once again, God saw Hagar and came to her aid in a desperate situation. Hagar's story is a complex and powerful one, and it raises some challenging questions. But for our purposes today, I hope we'll remember at least one lesson from her. Hagar faced extreme trials, but she chose to keep moving forward. She chose to have faith in God even when it was hard. Remember the name she used for God. You are the God who sees me. No matter your situation, whether you're just having a bad day or if you've been abused, taken advantage of, and cast off like Hagar was, I testify that God sees you. He sees me. He will not abandon us.